things happen after you build the lead that have happened in other games. Does that make it doubly frustrating? Made a point of emphasis in yeah, you know, just, uh, you know, my heart hurts for the guys in the locker room because they've, man, they've battled through a lot to get to this point, and, and you see them having success. And uh, I got to do a better job as a coach, uh, along with the staff, of, of, of helping them to make the transition to, to understand that when you have success, man, you can't take your foot off the gas. You can't become complacent. Uh, every play, uh, every drive. Uh, until the game's over, you got to be be looking at how can I get better? You know, how can I improve? You know, how can I uh, rely on my fundamentals uh, even more? Uh, and and I think that's you know where where I got to grow this football team up um, is is helping them to to understand. Man, you know you don't you don't press, you don't change. Man, you just focus more on the little things. Uh, where do, where where do I, where does my second step need to go? Where does my hand placement need to go? What's my communication? And I think sometimes when you're having success, it's easy to let those things go, and then you think that hey, it's just going to happen, uh, and then it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't happen. Uh, just uh, you know what I told them is we're learning some very hard lessons as a as a football program. Uh, that football, man, it's a it's a hard game, and it only gives you what you earn. It doesn't give you what you deserve. It just it gives you what you earn. And if you have 11 penalties and you don't you don't execute, then you're going to get uh, what you earn. And, and unfortunately, uh, when you have those things, typically uh, that earns you a, a, a loss. With, with Malachi, what was the reaction to his catch in the end zone, Hail Mary, and then why did no momentum carry over to the third grade? Yeah, um, good question. Uh, I thought I thought the guys uh, had a good had a good presence in the locker room, and there was a ton of ton of excitement uh, coming out. Um, but but one of the things that we're learning, uh, and and, uh, and I'm challenging these guys to internalize, is that energy and passion alone don't win this game, right? It, it takes a tremendous amount of focus, uh, attention to detail, um, uh, commitment. Poise, you know, all of those things, as opposed to just, you know, pure, pure emotion. And so, you know, I thought the guys came out understanding what we needed to do, uh, treating it as a zero-zero ball game that we got to go win the second half. Um, but unfortunately, you know, it didn't, it didn't carry over, and that's on me. And I got to figure out uh, how to do a better job of, of, of helping them uh, be able to put a complete game together. And that was the focus for us this week: is man, let's don't worry about the outcome. Let's just go play a complete game. Offense, defense, special teams, all doing their job, playing complementary football. Um, and we did uh, some good things in the first half, but we just uh, we, we didn't finish. What was your assessment on Tony Musket on his first start? Since you know, it's just uh, he he showed the competitive spirit that he has. I mean, you know, I was anxious to see how he was going to pull the ball down and run. Uh, and I thought he showed no hesitation, no fear. Uh, even saw him, you know, uh, lead with that shoulder uh, a couple times. I thought he made some some big time throws. Uh, I thought he st still competed to. Uh, he still competed when we weren't able to protect him cleanly. Um, you know, there late in the game, man, he's fired up. He wants to go, you know, go for it on fourth down to try and go win the game. Um, but I had to make some coaching decisions there. Um, so. You know, we'll look at the tape, and I'm sure there's going to be things to clean up. But just overall, you know, I, I like his leadership. I thought his poise uh, showed. I thought his competitive drive uh, showed. Uh, he showed the ability to make uh, plays with his legs and with his uh, and with his arm. There was a play in the fourth quarter, a sequence. It was fourth and four from their 37. It ended up working out for you because you punted and got the touchback, and they turned it over the next play. But did you think about going for it there? Yeah, I think. How much did you think? You know, I think there was like 10 minutes left. It was like 10 minutes left in the game, and and I said, you know, that in that situation, uh, with with the way the things have been going in the second half, I didn't want to give them a short field, a um, little bit out of field goal range for us. So I, I was hoping that uh, you could pin them inside the five, you know, and then the next thing you know, you, you if you can force a punt, then you get get good field position with an opportunity uh, to go to go score. So I was trying to play field position there, uh, didn't quite execute uh, the way we needed to. How much is it more when you look at the third and fourth quarter performance more about the depth concerns than anything else? And how do you kind of evaluate that? Yeah, that, that we, we're not going to make any excuses. I mean, who, next man up. I mean, that's that's another, you know, uh, reality in football. You know, it doesn't it doesn't matter because the team on the other side, they're not going to say, oh, you got your you're you're down to playing, you know, freshman and we're going to back off. No, they're going to turn it up. 
Um, so, you know, our guys got to be ready. You know, we're going into, we're finishing game five, going into game six, you know, so, they, so they, they, they've gotten some reps, both mentally and physically, uh, and then we got to go out and, uh, and execute. And, you know, at the end of the day, uh, who we run out there is who we run out there, and we got to go play, and we got to find a way to get stops. We got to find a way to, uh, to win. Yeah, I haven't gotten a, a full assessment yet. I know that uh, that he wasn't able to to come out in the second half. Uh, I know it's a knee. I'm not sure the the extent. Uh, they didn't indicate that it was uh, overly serious, but uh, I won't know that until we until we get back and get a good evaluation uh, back in Charlottesville. Do you think? Do you expect to get some of the guys back? I mean, I, I hope so. I hope so. I mean, Cam, uh, Cam Butler's uh, he's done for the season. Had surgery uh, on. Uh, might have been was it yesterday it was two days ago I think it was Thursday he had he had surgery on Thursday so he's done for the year you know hopefully we'll get you know Paul Akiri back uh, with the uh, with the long term option that uh, Clary uh, decided to go with I mean it will be late late in the season maybe last couple games before he's even you know cleared to to be ready to go uh, we hope Lex Long uh, will be within the next week or two. Um, you know, Smiley should be should be good to go, so we should get Smiley back uh, next week. So I'm anticipating that we get Lex, we get Smiley back uh, next week. Um, don't know Andre yet, um, and then uh, I'm trying to think of, of who else. Um, is there anybody else? Well, um, Malcolm. Malcolm got hurt. Yeah, Malcolm, Malcolm, and you know that that looks like it's going to be a couple, probably a, at least a week uh, type deal. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, you know, hopefully uh, we get good news on their young man, you know, that went down. Uh, definitely a scary moment. Uh, looked like he had some, some movement uh, in his extremities. And, and so, so hopefully, uh, you know, prayers up for him uh, that, he's, that he's okay. And it was just a precaution uh, that they had to take him, take him off the way they did. How do you get your running game going? Yeah. <laughs> Great question. Um, you, know, you know, you want your backs to carry the load. Um, but 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 it, it comes down to fundamentals, you know, footwork, you know, hand placement, eye discipline, communication. Um, you know, you can see that that we're we're running against some some loaded boxes uh, with extra defenders, but also you know we had way too many guys turn loose uh, in the backfield, and so it's it's it comes down to you know individuals trusting you know their their coaching, trusting the technique that. Uh, uh, that Coach Heff is 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 giving them, and then trusting, and then backs, you know, being disciplined with their tracks, you know, uh, not trying to do too much, not trying to hit the home run, taking the base hit, and you know, eventually, you know, in my experience, you know, when you can when you can, you know, go for four, go for six, go for seven before, it, eventually, it's going to break, and you're going to break the long one. But I think sometimes, you know, you can press and try to make the big one, uh, cutting back too early, right? Uh, not having your eyes where they need to be. So, you know, we're just going to go back and uh, and evaluate it because. I want to run the football, and that was a point of emphasis, you know, for this game was to run the football. And then structurally, you know, I thought they did a good job of, of mixing it up. You know, typically, you know, they 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 they, they, and they played a lot of their four down structure, but they did a good job with their game plan of starting in a four down structure and then stemming to an odd and standing up one of their ends, just trying to 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 mess with your points, uh, seeing that 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 structure uh, usually is a little bit more disruptive than just you know sitting in a stationary four down.